begin. Welcome to this SFA MassCom tutorial. I'm Dr. Casey Hart. Before we begin, I want to make it clear that these tutorials are made to supplement classroom procedures and classroom lectures, not to replace them. So, if you have any questions and you're part of one of our MassCom classes, please first go to your professor and use this as uh, extra practice or reinforcement. All right, with that being said, let's begin. This is the first of the tutorials in the series on Final Cut Pro X. I'll be using version 10.0.7. So, if you have a newer version, you may notice that there's some differences. If you have an older version, uh, you may also notice that there are some things that aren't quite the same. For the most part, the workflow and procedures will be pretty much the same. Things will be laid out in pretty much the same places and how you work with the program will remain almost constant. All right, with that being said, let's begin. This first video is a basic orientation. I'm going to be covering the different major parts of uh, Final Cut X and how they work together. In future videos, we'll be covering different tools, concepts like sequencing, concepts like importing video or organizing your workspace. But to begin, it's important to understand just the basic areas of Final Cut and how they work together. And that's what this tutorial will be focused on. Now, in Final Cut X, there's basically four different major areas you need to know about. First, the event library. Then, the project library. The timeline. And the viewer. Event library, project library, timeline, and viewer. To begin, let's talk about the event library. When you do what's called importing video, which will be in the next tutorial, the clips, the raw footage, all the shots, photos, audio, everything that you are going to work with will be displayed in the event library. Events are Final Cut's name for different uh, packages of uh, footage, different groupings of footage, and it will actually help you organize it uh, very, very effectively. Now you'll notice over here in the event library, I can actually see all of my different hard drives. I'm going to be working in the video storage. And then each one of these different uh, events has its own package of shots, of, um, of footage, of graphics, of audio. As you can kind of see here, these are all photos. These are audio files. I'm going to be working under this that's called J300. And you can see all these blue clips are actually video files. Now, if I have what's called <clears throat> my skimming turned on, down here at the bottom right of the screen, I'll be able to move my mouse over a clip and see exactly what is in that clip. This is called skimming. Some people would call it scrubbing. The red line that you see moving across the, the screen is called the playhead. This is going to come up over and over and over again as we talk about Final Cut X. But I can move my playhead, my mouse, over these clips and see exactly what they are. I can listen to them if I wanted to, but right now I just wanted to show you the basic concept. So, the event library organizes your raw footage into categories, into boxes called events. I usually refer to this as uh, like building with Legos. They all come in a box that contains everything that you're going to need to build the Death Star or you know a pirate ship or something like that. But you're not trying to construct anything here. This is just basically your bin. This is your your box that has all of your footage in it. Now you'll notice you'll see the clips on your viewer. It doesn't matter whether you're actually working in the event library, the timeline, or the project library. You'll be able to see all of your clips right here on the viewer. So this is always up, it's always available, and it's where you're actually going to be monitoring your progress or monitoring the different clips. So, event library, viewer, 
Next we come down to the project library. Now, I know that Final Cut has released a new up update of Final Cut X. Um, I believe it's 10.1.0 right now where this changes. But for now, let's talk about what this version of Final Cut uh, has. To get to the project library, if you don't already see it, there's a film reel down at the bottom left-hand side of the screen. You will click that and you'll see a listing again of all of your different storage devices. I'm saving this on Macintosh HD, although most of our students are going to save their work on the video storage. And you'll be able to actually scroll through and, as we did before, preview different projects we're working on. Now, if this is your box of Legos, the project library is where you're actually going to start constructing the final project. Here is where you're actually going to choose your projects. You would create a project by hitting the plus sign, and then you would list it, label it, and choose where you want to save it. But for now, anytime you come back to a project you're working on, you're going to find it in the project library. If I select one of these options or one of these projects, like this one, double click on it, this brings us to the final section, which is the timeline. The timeline is where we actually can start constructing our projects. Now, I've already done a little bit of work here, and you can see the playhead moving across. If I hit the space bar, with Impact Cowboy Church, uh, we've been going on six years now. Uh, we started in 2007. Uh, for the message that we're trying to get out for the rodeo is that God loves everyone. If I hit the space bar, that's basically play. I could also have just hit play here. Even the people that don't feel like they're they're worthwhile. And watch the playhead go across the screen. When the playhead crosses a clip. This is what you're going to be seeing up here. At any given point in time, we can tell exactly what is going to be on the screen. Our timeline and our timer coincide. So at approximately 30 seconds, you'll notice how, if I click on the timeline to lock my playhead in place, you'll notice this is what's happening at 30 seconds, which corresponds with my 30 second line here. 40 second, uh, 45 second line rather, 1 minute line, 115, and so forth and so on. Now, you can organize your clips however you want in the timeline. We're going to talk more about this when we, uh, in the sequencing tutorial, but by using our basic selection tool, we could click to select a clip and then move it on our timeline wherever we want. Now, to talk about some basic timeline controls, if I click on a clip once and then move it up, I can layer a clip above another clip. Or I can layer a clip on our main magnetic timeline. Again, we'll discuss this more in sequencing, but for now, let's talk about the basics. So, here I've just got a basic sequence. Clip 1, clip 2, clip 3, clip 4. If I wanted this clip at the end, I simply drag it to the end, and you'll see that it prompts me to place it here. If I thought that I may want to layer, which means I put one clip above the other in priority, and this is how you should think about it, is whatever is highest takes priority. Whatever is highest on these timelines will be played over whatever is underneath it. Watch what happens when I move my playhead over it. Right now we see these two guys uh, in the pond. As soon as my playhead crosses over the, t the top clip, you'll see that one takes priority over the one underneath it. All right, I'm going to put this back in my sequence. Now, one other thing to show you as far as timeline is concerned. When I move a clip, like say the water obstacle, if I move the clip to where I want it to be, notice that it has a little handle in the front left side. If I move my clip 
between the first and the second clip here, you'll see that it puts a blue line and then creates space for me to drop this clip in. This is basically how we do sequencing in what we call nonlinear editing. It means that you don't have to be locked in to one smooth flow of events. You can easily organize and reorganize your events however you want or your clips however you want. Okay, the final thing to, to call your attention to with regard to the event library, the viewer, the project library, and the timeline are our time shifting tools. These are basically zooming in and zooming out. Now notice your event library has one and your project library has one. These zoom in and zoom out on the clips allowing you to cut more precise sections out. For example, if I select, let's go with zip lining since we haven't worked with this. Right now, my uh, my slider is set on all, which means it doesn't matter how long or short these clips are, I'm just going to see them in one box. If I start moving this to the left, now each box will represent 30 minute increments. So if I had an hour long show, I would see two boxes there. 10 minute increments, five, one minute, oh, now we start seeing things. So here, I've got roughly one, two, three, four minutes in this clip. If I keep moving down, each box is now worth 30 seconds, 10 seconds, five, two, one, or even half second increments. So if I wanted to be incredibly, incredibly precise here in how I cut, notice as I play my or move my playhead through, the video is moving very slow. That's because each box represents half a second worth of time. This would allow me to be very, very precise in how I cut. Notice right now my uh, mouse is telling me that I have roughly two seconds uh, worth of footage, 2.13 seconds worth of footage that I could then grab and move down into my project. Okay. The event library, the viewer, the project library, and the timeline. These are the four basic and most important parts of Final Cut X. All of your projects are going to work with these, so how you understand them and how they work together is of paramount importance. I would suggest that you practice with them. Uh, practice moving clips from the event library into the timeline. Practice creating new projects. And just see what, uh, what things look like on the viewer. In the next sections, we're going to talk about importing video, which is where all video editing begins. So. I'll see you there on SFA MassCom Tutorials.